Hello, I'm Des Holden. I'm the Medical Director of Surrey and Sussex Healthcare and I'm also the Medical Director of the Kent Surrey and Sussex Academic Health Science Network. The first challenge that I would articulate is the challenge of giving good outpatient services. So this is an area where, in general, people come for a face-to-face -face consultation with a doctor or specialist nurse um, for a required period of time that's often quite brief. Um, and there are many complaints about the way our patient services run. Uh, timeliness of being able to see people when they're referred by their GP, uh, the content of the meeting they have, the amount of waiting time they have when they come up for an appointment, uh, the way the information is transferred to them within a consultation and then how information follows them out of the consultation and also gets back to their primary care provider. So in all of these steps um, we are failing to meet the needs of all the people we see because they have very diverse needs and they're very diverse people but we have one model that tends to try to fit everybody into the same bracket of receiving information. So with regard to outpatients, I think they're potentially digital solutions in virtually any part of that pathway. So as an alternative to face-to-face um, -face consultation, I'm sure that there are digital pathways that allow people either to gain specialist advice without seeing a doctor or nurse face-to-face, -face, or perhaps some sort of group interaction where as long as confidentiality is um, is waived or is understood it might be possible to have group consultations perhaps through Skype or perhaps through other platforms that allow people both to gain advice themselves but through voicing their questions being heard by other members with similar diagnoses or similar challenges then people can get educated through the process of hearing the same story. Patients often um, would prefer to get information from peers who are who are living their lives with a similar diagnosis and have discovered by becoming experts by experience on how to address certain challenges. So there would be, I imagine, digital platforms that could enable people to get advice from peers rather than always from a trained professional who perhaps doesn't live with the same challenges that that person is experiencing. And ditto, there must be um, digital solutions for family members or carers so that they also can become upskilled around the challenges that people with that diagnosis face and can be supported. The second challenge that I would like to articulate is the challenge of providing for people's mental health needs. So an acute hospital is very well set up to deal with emergencies and also well set up to deliver elective care. But at the moment, um, up and down the country, acute hospitals are not as good as they could be at meeting the mental health challenges that the people they care for have. Now that's both when they, people have a primary mental health diagnosis, but also it's recognising the mental health challenge that people in our beds with a physical problem also have. So for instance, it's well known that people have high levels of anxiety and very often have depression, um, but structuring a workforce that is aware of those needs and can do something around those needs, and also providing a way in which people can articulate those needs more easily, or those ongoing needs can be met when they're discharged from hospital beds, uh, is, a, is a big challenge. with regard to the members of the public who are in our care. Um, I am not aware of digital offerings, but I know they must be out there that could be around um, the diagnosis or could be around uh, intervention like cognitive behavioural therapy or uh, information sets or games that, that can lead people to understand where their anxieties or their depression are coming from in relation to their physical illness. Um, and all of these, I think, potentially would be usable to build mental well-being and uh, esteem. Um, 
There may be applications that are um, able to help people not indulge in risky behaviour or choices that lead them into situations where their, um, their mental illness is more likely to have a consequence. So uh, thinking around addiction or thinking around self-harming and uh, suicidal intent, there are potential for interventions that prevent certain behaviours or prevent or give an alarm if um, people are heading into situations, for instance, if they're going into an off licence or if they're going into a pub, it may be possible to structure alarms that say this is something that um, has previously led to uh, uncontrolled drinking, for instance. Um, with regards to staff, so I think staff are um, very well-meaning and very up for the challenge of being able to give better mental health support. But again, at the moment, there's very little things that organisations can turn to, very few things organisations can turn to, to support staff in, in that learning experience and in gaining those skills. So for instance, almost all hospitals have mandatory training around safeguarding, around fire, around um, basic life support, yet we don't do anything around basic mental health support. And so, again, apps, educational packages, learning through games would all be ways potentially that I think it would be possible to make an offering that staff would value and equip them with the right skills. The third challenge that faces our hospital and also many other hospitals up and down the country is best articulated as how we discharge people from our care when they can't return to a similar state of health and accommodation that they came from. So for instance, when people often are elderly and their physical challenges are beginning to be um, not meetable within their own accommodation. How do we move people from an acute hospital bed into ongoing care facilities, be they nursing homes or residential homes or even community hospital beds? And although it's, it's uh, common to think that a hospital bed is a safe place to be, in fact, as an environment, it's quite a lonely environment. It carries health risk in terms of disorientation, in terms of a risk of falling when you're not in your own environment. Uh, a risk that the, the bacteria that are common in hospitals are often more resistant to antibiotics than in people's own homes. So it's not a completely safe place to be and therefore it's not risk free even to the individual to stay in a hospital bed beyond when it's best for them. And certainly where beds are occupied by people for whom it's no longer the best environment, that still prevents a challenge in admitting the next person who needs a bed into that bed that's occupied. So the problem with a, uh, an effective and uh, good quality discharge is that in general, the process doesn't begin early enough. So we can anticipate that when some people are admitted to hospital, their safe discharge to ongoing care when they're fit to leave the hospital is going to be a challenge. So for instance, there's almost certainly more we can do around understanding right at the moment of admission what is the risk of um, that particular person not being able to return to the environment from which they've come? Again, how information flows from um, prior to the admission to inform the care right from the word go in thinking about what will a safe discharge look like could also be an area right for digital intervention. Um, the whole element of passporting for people. So we now talk about people having passports for admission uh, if they have a catheter, here only catheter, but the concept of passporting people so that they can gain the expertise that they will benefit from early in their journey rather than after, in some case, hours when they are iller, more dehydrated, more confused than they were when they were admitted is another area. And then beyond that, the, the, the limitations to a system whereby there isn't enough capacity to meet the demand. Um, we see that as um, 
in many cases, what keeps people in a hospital bed for many, many days, sometimes weeks and even months longer than they need to be. So a better digital map of real-time capacity in the community would be useful. So how do nursing homes and other facilities declare their availability? How can that be taken advantage of and more readily map people's needs into capacity? Is there a way in which that could be facilitated digitally through, um, through telemedicine, either as a Skype type conference thing, or even um, a hub such as the Alexa system, which might be able to give ongoing advice both to the person and also to the carers in the environment there. Um, that they're now living in.